Hi, I'm Lima Milan, and we're going to look at making an instrument from an audio clip in Ableton Live. So, I have an audio clip of a vocal already loaded in here. I'll just play this for you. Are you ready? So, I like the R section at the beginning of this clip, and I want to load this into a sampling device, which allows me to put an audio file into an instrument that could then be played up and down a chromatic keyboard like we have here. So, what I need to do first is create the, the destination for this audio clip. So I'm going to get a simpler device, which is one of Ableton Live sampling devices, and just load that into the empty area here to create a MIDI track for it to live in. And as you can see from the device itself, it says drop sample here. So I'm going to just kind of first single out the bit I want to work in. So I think it's just that first portion here. Are you? Okay, so. Using my pointer, I'm just going to highlight the portion I want to make a split at, and then I'm going to choose the split command. So control click and then split. And as you can see, command and E is the shortcut for doing that with the keyboard. And once I've done that, I'm going to bring the simpler into view. So it's down at the bottom in the device view and just drag this clip into the simpler. Okay, so the sample's loaded in. If I go to my MIDI keyboard, I can play it as if it's a normal instrument now. So there's a couple of things we need to do to make sure that the notes I play to play my instrument are actually the true notes of the pitch we're hearing from this sample. So regardless of where I've got my audio sample from, I need to make sure that that audio sample is correctly tuned so when I hit a middle C, I hear a middle C as well. So the simplest way of doing this is to find out what pitch it does play at when I hold middle C. And in Ableton, we have a tuner. So like a guitar tuner, this can be placed at the end of our processing chain, and it will display the pitch. So if I hold C now, so I'm holding a C, but it's registering as a B. So in order to pull that up to C, I'll go to controls, and I go to the transposition control, which is literally like taking it up one step or taking it down one step at a time. And I'll set that up one to take that from the B key that it was and make sure that it's actually a C as well. Now from this point onwards, I can play chords, play melodies, and then get creative with it from that point. But there's more options inside the simpler instrument which can give us a few different outputs. So, or results. So if I go to the warp section, if you're familiar with audio clips already, audio clips can be warped, which means manipulating their properties of time and pitch. So if I put that into warp mode, it's going to enable what we call a time preservation mode. So although I'll change the pitch of the sample, the actual duration of the sample is the same no matter where I play it. Before, with warp disabled, it plays a lot faster when I play it up, so it's very speed behavior. So warping is an interesting way of just preserving the pitch of the sample. And also, we have warp modes that we can change too, which will change the algorithm or the maths that's used to make up for the fact that we're trying to play a sample faster and slower whilst not making it be faster and slower. So the pitch changes, but the duration stays the same. So we go to tones mode. And let's maybe go a little bit higher up. And modify the properties of this particular warp mode. You can see there's a very different effect from that warping algorithm. So we go to texture mode. Immediately just switch it into that mode sounds different for the fact that I'm playing this almost two octaves higher than it should be. It's making the, the sound stay the same duration, but the way that it's doing it in this mode is different to the previous mode, so it has a different sonic character. So now it doesn't sound so much like the original sample that it was, but it still has an interesting melodic uh, content to it. So aside from the warp function to preserve time, we can also use the warp function to 
alter the time a little bit too. So we have these double and half tempo buttons. So if I press one of those, it doubles the duration of the sample. And if I push that to more of an extreme, we get into special effects kind of territory too. So what we've done here is we've taken an audio clip and singled out a portion of that clip we wanna bring into our simpler device. The Simpler is a sampling device, so it takes an audio file and allows you to play it like a melodic instrument. And then we've explored aspects of warping to get different tonal results from our original sample.